I'm back on Sheppey at the eastern end at Shellness, hoping for some flounder action. I had fished two marks here last summer, but that might have been a bit too late for this species. However, I did catch a decent bass. If interested, I've placed a link to those sessions in the top right hand corner and in the description below this video. Spring is a time when many visiting anglers come to Sheppey to fish for the rays, and that was evident on my first session at the end of March with the beaches lined with anglers trying to catch fawnbacks. I managed to find a parking spot well away from the crowds and fawnbacks weren't on my mind. In my opinion, conditions were far too bright for them and I didn't bring any large baits with me. The first rod had already gone out with lugworm on a free hook clip down rig and I got interest straight away. How many times has that happened? While well, searching for a rig for my second rod, I notice a bite on the first. I strike and feel the fish on. Is that a good omen or a bad omen? Super bright conditions have caused a bit of a burnout on this video, but anyway, at least I've got this fish and managed to film its capture in all of its excitement. Well, the tip of the rod is bending and I know that there's a fish on. It took a while to get in, but that's mainly because I waded out to cast and it's been hooked at long range. Uh, no, not a specimen flounder, but a tiny schoolie. At least it's got me off a mark and I haven't blanked. I pan around the area and you can see there's no other anglers in sight. There are a few on the other side of those rocks, but no one along this stretch with a sea wall up to the point at Neptune's Cafe. Having returned that fish, both rods are now ready for casting out, so let's have a quick look at the rigs. The Sheppy rig is for fishing anywhere from close in to long range. A couple of my hook baits have been tipped with razor clam, since there's evidence of them naturally occurring here, so it can't do any harm. I've got here a bit late, about three quarters of an hour before the top of the tide, but intend to fish it all the way down. There is colour in the water, and I know that some flounders have been coming out from this area, so I am quite hopeful. Before I cast out the second rod, I'll just point out where I'm fishing for this video. Sheppey's on the Kent side of the Thames estuary, adjacent to the Hoo Peninsula, with all hallows and the Isle of Grain. I've identified some notable venues on Sheppey, then zoom in on the eastern end, with shell nests extending to the swale. I previously fished just north of a private estate and by the beach houses. This video covers three other marks. Well, that first cast scoredy was a bad omen, since I get a crack off on the second cast of that rig. I will now have to stay to low tide to try and retrieve it, and you'll see why much later in this video. A close up of the rod tips in the next clip is after I've cast out again, having put on a new leader, a new rig. Another little indication, so I grab hold of a rod ready to strike. But it was only teasing me. Then having put the rod down, it has another go. Unfortunately, I think I've hit it. But, is it a flounder, or just another schoolie? A bit disappointed, but I was half expecting that, due to the nature of that bite.
So far, the two fish have just taken plain lugworm, ignoring the baits tipped with razor, and both bites have been on a clip-down rig. Anyway, to cut long story short, there's no further action and that was despite fishing on until low water to retrieve that lost rig. The anglers, the other side of those rocks, informed me that they had blanked. So, a bit of a disappointing day. For my next session, I decided to head to the far end of the settlement at Shellness, bordering onto the nature reserve. Conditions were almost identical, but this time I arrived a bit early and could check the layout of the land. No seawall here, and a beach largely made up of cockle shells and slipper limpets. I'll be casting over mud, but there's some gravel patches to my right. I'll be starting with my long range clip down rigs since the tide is still some way out, but I've also had plenty of time to set up my beach ledger rod, and to this I've attached a long snood Sheppy rig, which is still on its winder. This will be for fairly close in work, mainly towards the end of the groin when the tide is at high. So a three ounce elongated watch lead is sufficient. Eager to start fishing, and with hindsight, I should have brought waders since I'm going to have to walk through some of that mud to cast. It's not deep mud, but it's enough to get my walking boots dirty and the bottoms of my jeans. But I couldn't wait any longer to get going. I do know sometimes you can catch flounders really early in the tide when there's next to no water there. However, I would have liked to have gone into the water to cast, but without waders, I couldn't do that. At this state of the tide, I'm only going to be fishing with one rod. The other rod is baited up, ready to go, once the tide has come in a bit more. No, I haven't forgotten where my tripod is. There's a hollow with water in near the end of that groin, so that allows me to wipe my boots a bit. In the unlikely event that I get a bite whilst I'm still holding my rod, I should be able to feel that since I'm using braid. My tripod's a fair distance from where my rig has landed, but I can still tighten up to the lead, which is one advantage of using braid. Because there's no stretch in the line, I'll still be able to see any tiny knocks, which I wouldn't if I was using mono. And I can still drag the baits without any difficulty. And would you believe it? There's a bite. And something's dislodged the sinker since there's a small drop back. I'm a little bit hesitant, but then I decide to strike, and it feels like there's something on. Once again, the thought of it being a good or bad omen runs through my head, and I'm not looking forward to getting my boots mucky again. 
and although it's a completely different state for Tide, it's deja vu again, a little schooly on the first cast. Had it been a flounder, that would have been a good omen, but at least I haven't blanked again, and I've still got a lot of the Tide to play with. Tide's now come in sufficiently for me to be able to cast out my other rod. It's still a fair distance out, but at least I can walk to my left, where the ground is a bit harder. It also means I'll be casting this rig nowhere near where the other one is. Small bits of lugworm are my choice for flounder fishing if I haven't got any ragworm. It's a long wait for my second bite, and that was still at distance. With the tide being in now, I am alternating between fishing short and long with one of my rods. So the Arcadia has already been used, but this bite has been at long range. It's taken a long time to wind in this fish, and once again it's a schoolie of similar size as before. I've been casting the beach ledger rod towards the end of that grind, but I've not seen any action on it. Although the sun has started to go down, and so has the tide, I decided not to bother staying any longer. So, this is the end of my session. I could have fished on for another hour or so, but it was getting rather chilly. A little bit disappointed, since the ground over which I'm fishing looks as if it's going to be more productive than other areas of shellness I've been fishing. So, I'll definitely be back and trying this spot yet again. However, there is a little bit of a walk to get here. So my next session will be somewhere from where I can just park my vehicle and get fishing straight away. Will it be third time lucky or will it just be three sessions in a row with only two little best for my efforts? Because my previous sessions weren't very successful, I waited a month before coming back. This time I've parked in a car park south of Neptune's cafe. Here you can park just behind the seawall where you'll be fishing. And I'm right on the point. This time I've got some large ragworm and peeler crabs to go with my lugworm, so I intend to fish one rod with bigger baits and larger hooks. However, before setting that one up, I've already cast out 
with a standard free hook clip down rig with lug worm on it. Conditions are fairly similar as before, but there's a little bit of breeze and it's onshore, but I still think it's too bright for rays. Well, here's the importance of occasionally dragging your baits. As soon as I drag my rig, I've got a bite straight away. Is this another bad omen, since this wasn't my first cast? But this feels a bit bigger than those tiny schoolies I had before. Well, at least it's something different, and I'm fairly happy with catching this dogfish. Quick pan round of where I'm fishing, and a quick look at my rigs. I've baited the long snud clipped down rig with ragworm, with a top snud having the crab as well, but I haven't clipped this down just yet. Well, that's bad luck yet again. Just like my first session, having caught my first fish, I then crack off on the next cast. That means I'll have to set up again and stay until the tide goes all the way back down. When I'm fishing shallow water venues, I don't like to leave broken off rigs out there. There's always a chance that fish might hook itself and remain tethered as the water goes out. So, if at all possible, I'll wait. And if it's safe enough to go out, in other words, if the mud is not too deep, I'll try and retrieve my rig before going home. The rod's been set up again with a free hook rig and I've clipped down ready to cast out. Like the previous two sessions, there's not much of a tidal pull, so grip leads aren't needed, but I'm still able to create a slight bend in the tip by tightening up to the lead. There's my second bite, and it's to the free hook rig again. And once again, it feels like there's a bit of weight on.
things are definitely improving now is a double shot. And this time it's a smooth hound on a middle snood to join the dogfish that's on the bottom one. They certainly seem to like that lugworm, so I'm sticking to using that. I've not had a bite on a rag so far. The rig I lost had size 2 Aberdeens on short snuds. This one's got slightly longer snuds with size 4 Aberdeens. And I'm using a 150 gram Takana Americano lid, whereas the rig I lost had a 5 ounce breakaway flat lid. Another bite on the lugworm, but this time I feel the fish come off.
with the smooth hounds and dogfish about, I'm a bit disappointed that I had a bite on this rod. I know those smaller smooth hounds like ragworm and peeler crab of course. And I would have expected dogfish on those baits as well, since they're not very fussy. In fact, the baits look pretty much untouched. I'm now casting this rig at range, so I'm clipping down. Before it was acting like a two hook flapper. I have tried it in close, just in case there might be a big bass around, but I still think my best bet of catching on it is at range. I think the wind needs to be a lot stronger and much larger waves for the bass to be close in. Tide's been in and now starting to ebb and I'll get another bite. And unfortunately there's another fairly decent fish that's come off.
Snuff and knock on the brick with lugworm. And it's another fairly decent dogfish, so this session is a hell of a lot better than my previous two. No, I'm not keeping it. I'm not that partial to rock salmon. Tide's right down now, and as I've mentioned before, I'm staying until it goes right out. And there's a bite of her being next to no water left. You may notice that now some bait collectors have arrived and this friendly chap is looking for peeler crabs but my attention is what's on the end of my line since I do feel a fish on. Well, it's a miracle. At last it's a flounder. Well, I thought that's never going to happen and Shell Ness was going to defeat me. I recast that rod and packed away the other one. And I couldn't believe it, I got another bite. So here's two very good reasons to stay until the tide's gone right out. Another flounder to make my day. And more importantly, whilst going back to return that fish, I see one splashing about attached to the rig I lost earlier. And this is one very lucky smooth hound. Just as well I did stay till the very end. It went back quite happily, but I can't really add it to my catch tally. So this is a nice way to finish a session and shellness has come good at the end. <laughs>